I use the OPD to help me best customize the implant to each patient. By looking at the data that the OPD3 provides, I can select which implant best suits each of the eyes of the, two, of the patient. Sometimes we use a different implant in one eye than in another eye. It all depends on the eye's quantitative numbers that I'm able to obtain from the OPD3. Also, I am able to demonstrate these maps in the exam room to the patients. So both the patient and his or her family member is able to understand their disease process or their ocular numbers so they can best accept my recommendation, whether it be a toric implant, a monofocal implant, or a multifocal, or even an accommodative implant. Actually, I have, and this was not too, lo too long ago, um, a woman who is an executive at a pharma company actually came to me beside herself. She said her life had been ruined. She could no longer drive at night. She just did not know what was going on and she was at wit's end. She had had flawless, beautiful cataract surgery. She had a perfectly centered multifocal implant in each of her eyes, but was miserably unhappy. So I had to figure out what was going on and she had come to me for a second opinion. So after a variety of testing, including the OPD3, I realized she had a very large positive angle kappa, which meant that her visual center was different than her anatomical center of her eye, of her pupil. So even though under the slit lamp, her multifocal implant was perfectly centered within her pupil, she was having significant issues with night driving. So after a lot of speaking with her and explaining this to her and showing her the maps on a large monitor in the exam room, she understood what was going on. We agreed to go ahead and do an IOL exchange, take out her multifocal and put in a monofocal. And after that, she said her life went back to normal. And what was surprising is in her fellow eye, she did not have a positive angle kappa. So she was not unhappy with a multifocal in her one eye, yet her angle kappa was so large in her second eye that led to these problems. Had it not been for the OPD3, I too, like her ophthalmologist, would not have known what the problem was. So it was because I was able to measure and calculate the positive angle kappa in this patient, I was able to come up with a solution for her. The average cataract age of my patients in our offices in Pennsylvania and New Jersey is about 70 or so. Many of them have multiple medical issues, mobility issues. So with this day and age and everybody being extremely conscious of time, patient flow and efficiency is a key factor in any practice. With the OPD3, we are able to capture many, many points of information within 30 to 40 seconds with one seating. Rather than moving a patient from station to station, instrument to instrument, which could take many minutes, within 30 to 40 seconds, we can capture a very large amount of information with the OPD3. Then this information is networked into our exam rooms. So when the patient is brought into the examination room, these maps are uploaded on a large screen monitor. So when I come into the room, the map is there, the patient is there, and his or her family member is there. So I am able to better explain what's going on. I am able to help the patient, quote unquote, see their astigmatism by pointing to the bow tie pattern that is displayed on the monitor. This really helps the patient finally understand what this nebulous word astigmatism is to a lay person. Moreover, the family members get it too because they're seeing the bow tie, they're seeing the astigmatism, or they're seeing their positive angle kappa, where the 
visual center is way off from the anatomical center of the pupil. And this way they understand whether they are or they are not a candidate for a specific advanced technology implant. So the OPD not only helps me, but it helps the patient and his or her family understand why they are, and equally importantly, why they are not a candidate for these available options. I think we all have a subset of patients in our practice where they come back holding their glasses in their hand saying, I can't see with these. And it's very frustrating when you take them back in the exam room, do an excellent refraction, come up with an identical prescription, and yet you hear the frustration in the patient's voice that they are unable to see with their glasses while driving. So it's a, it's a mystery and it takes up a lot of chair time, it takes up a lot of time reading the glasses, sometimes we even have to read them with manual lensometry to make sure that the auto lensometer is not making a mistake. And even with all of that, often we were unable to find a solution for these frustrated patients. Now with the OPD3, they have a feature of daytime and nighttime driving. This has been such a help to our practice and particularly to this small subset of patients. What we are able to do now is refract them under mesopic and scotopic lighting conditions. When the pupil size is different, dilated or constricted, a different refractive error is being picked up in a small group of patients. If the pupil is larger, sometimes we're picking up more astigmatism, more cylinder, requiring a very different prescription than daytime driving when the pupil is constricted and they're picking up less of their cylinder in the refraction. So we just had a patient like this, a very intelligent, again an executive of a pharma company, and he was very unhappy with his nighttime driving. So we realized that he needed two different pairs of glasses, one for daytime, one for nighttime, so he can best see under two different lighting conditions. Had it not been for the OPD3, we would not have been able to pick this up because in our refracting lanes and exam rooms, we always have a, the same amount of light. And under that light condition, we were not able to mimic daytime and nighttime driving conditions. So with this feature in the OPD3, I think we'll be able to help with the frustration that these people have by finding a solution for their refractive issues. One of the maps that's available on the OPD3 is the higher order aberrations, which we can display to the patients through point spread function, pre and post cataract surgery. And I use this with every one of my cataract patients. I'm able to show them exactly what their um, vision looks like looking at a source of light with their cataract in place, what the, that point source of light will look like after their cataract has been removed. And by demonstrating that at times, even after successful cataract surgery, they're going to have some residual, what I call feathering of a point of light, this way they are prepared. What I'm doing is I'm setting their expectations that they are not going to have a perfect pinpoint of light after cataract surgery because of their own higher order aberrations, which is part of their cornea, part of their visual system. So by explaining this to them ahead, to both the patient and his or her family, they now know that even after cataract surgery, they can expect a little bit of feathering or glare or halos, however one wants to explain it, towards a point source of light. So as a result, I don't get complaints anymore from patients saying, I didn't realize I would still have a little bit of glare or a little bit of feathering from oncoming headlights or when I look at a street lamp. It's all discussed ahead of time. The expectations are set. Moreover, it's part of their higher order aberration and that cannot be corrected. 
And it's through the OPD3 that I'm able to not only understand it myself, but explain it to the patient and their family members. At the time of the cataract visit, with each of my patients, I go over multiple maps of the OPD3. I'm a believer if you don't discuss something with a patient beforehand, the patient will think either the cataract surgery caused it, or I gave it to them, or they will blame the entire process of the surgery or blame the surgeon. To avoid that, one of the chief things I discuss with my patients is their ocular surface condition and their dry eyes. Since most patients undergoing cataract surgery are in their mid-70s or thereabout, most of them have ocular surface, ocular surface issues, meibomian gland dysfunction, dry eyes. So what I do is I use the Placido disc map of the OPD3 to illustrate to them their level of dry eyes. If the rings are not perfectly round, they're a little wobbly, irregular, um, broken up with dark black kind of spots on the corneal surface, I point these out to the patient and let them know that they have a pre-existing disease called dry eye syndrome that will not be affected by cataract surgery, that this disease process may indeed get worse as they accumulate birthdays so that we can treat that separately, but I distinctly want them to know that cataract surgery did not give them dry eye, nor did I as the surgeon give them dry eye by doing the cataract surgery. And now that I am able to display this incredible map, which takes up a huge monitor and they see this big circle with irregular rings, uh, on the Placido disc image, the patients are now able to quote unquote see their dry eye. They are able to understand for the first time the irregularities of their tear film and ocular surface.